hand versus chainsaw. It looks painful. Our hospitals are taking care of more patients than ever. You're right. <laughs> With medical teams under constant pressure. Can Dr. Pixie come to resource, please? Somebody as poorly as this little one, we really need to treat them quickly. To meet our expectations. I'm just worried about what it's going to be like afterwards. But there's a crucial member of the team we sometimes forget. I've never ever been on a bed like this. The hospital bed. Another ward, another story, another bed. <laughs> In our lifetime, we are likely to need one of them at least three times. I've probably spent a quarter of my life on a hospital bed. <laughs> In this series, our cameras have been given unprecedented access to beds in four very different hospitals across the country. It's life, life and death, and everything that goes in between. We'll see the world through the bed's eyes. Hello, my love. Hiya. As they share the most challenging. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Most intimate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I know. And most rewarding. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hospital Moments of our lives. Thank you for being here. I haven't been anywhere else. The hospital cannot function without beds. Beds are vital. This is the secret life of the hospital bed. Newcastle has a population of over 280,000 people. For urgent treatment, they come here to the Royal Victoria Infirmary. The hospital is rated amongst the top five in the country. All these people are stuck in the main waiting room waiting to be seen. Like most A&E departments, the RVI has a special area for critical patients called Resus. Right, what I need to do, my love, is listen to your lungs and your heart and all that. OK, and then... Resus beds are real workhorses. Bang a tube Get some bloods off her. Running around the clock and rarely getting a break. This is Rhesus Bed 2, standing by for its next emergency. Emergency department, RVI. Ten minutes, lovely. Thanks a lot. Bye. Two-year-old Nicholas has been rushed in by ambulance with his mum, Claire, because he's struggling to breathe. Yeah, do you want to come and sit on the bed with a little one? And who's this? Nicholas, come on then. My name's Laura, one of the doctors. Bed 2 has seen its fair share of respiratory problems. It's the fifth most common cause of death in children. His mum said he did have a temperature last night. He's temps when he yeah, he's very flushed, isn't he? Yeah. Um, What's he's coming in acutely short of breath um, with a very high respiratory rate, so they're breathing very fast. Dr Atwood is the consultant in charge today. So has he been in with a similar kind of episode before yeah, then? Um, back in March he had him. That was after the adenoids were taken yeah. out, was it? Okay. Yeah. Staff are hoping that salbutamol, a medication to treat asthma, might help stabilise Nicholas. They're also monitoring oxygen levels in his blood. He's two and he's saying, Mummy, help. It, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Okay. Are you OK, Mum? So I think we'll just give him a few more of the nebulizers back to back. Um, we'll let that settle. He's just really, really tight in his chest, so we can't hear much. Um, so we're going to give him a little bit of steroids to help dampen all the tightness down and help with the wheeze as well. And he's had a little bit of calpol, as you know. Yeah. Is that all right? Are you happy with that? Student nurse Kirk has mainly dealt with adults in her career so far. It's just normally like they fill the bed and he doesn't even feel like his mum's like holding him on the bed because he's so tiny. Yeah. We're like adult nurses because we're not used to it. It's like scary because they're just so little. It's absolutely awful, you know. You're the protector at the end of the day. I'm, you know, I'm a single mum. Um, I am his, his only sole protector. Nicholas has been on resus bed two now for 50 minutes. Staff preparing for a drip in case his condition gets worse. He will be kept under observation. The next 20 minutes are critical.
In Birmingham, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital's day surgery is the largest in Europe, dealing with up to 100 patients every day. The beds here work a different shift to most in the NHS. They get to rest overnight, but between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., they're hard at work with scheduled procedures. This is bed 52. Its next patient is coming in for a hernia operation. 63-year-old security guard Eddie has brought girlfriend of 11 months Shirley for support. Oh, no. This has been going on for ages now, and uh, he's grinned and bared it, as they say. I kept moaning at him about, we've got to go and get it sorted. And here we are. It's going to be sorted. Yeah. Only a minor operation. One big snip and you're in and you're out. A what? A snip and you're out. A snip and you're out. Huh? We do laugh an awful, awful lot. <laughs> I've never known anything like it. And he giggles all the time. He's a real giggler. We keep saying to each other, we've really only been together 11 months. <laughs> Here's a good job, darling. You met me. What would you do now? Uh, oh, I don't know. I'd probably just be plodding along as it is, you know. You're a happy bunny. <laughs> I'm really happy. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy with you, darling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Anyways. We're like a pair of old shoes. <laughs> we've got lots to look forward to, so we've got to get him mended now <laughs> so that we can actually do things together. Do you think I can ask him to get take some of these off while you're at it? No. Take, just a bit of skin off there. Leave them alone. You sure? They're staying on. You can have the inside, but you can't have the outside. outside. <laughs> For most operations, patients need to wear special socks to protect against blood clots forming in their legs. Here you go. Get a pop these on to cover your lovely tattoo. It's got fat legs. Hey. Can you do it yourself? At least they're not the horrible white ones they used to use. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Can you pull them up? Yeah. Blimey, they really are tight. Where are we going to get to? <laughs> I feel like you're a batty. Yeah, get that quite a lot. Bed 52 has now seen it all. Eddie, or is it Nora Batty, is ready for his operation. His bed's next job is to carry him more than 250 metres to theatre. I think the operation will be fine. I think I'm just worried about what it's going to be like afterwards and how he's going to deal with it. You've really got to take it easy, OK? No buts. You've got to do it. No buts. You've got to remember, he's 63. And, and the surgeon said if he was 85, he wouldn't even do it. So bed 52 is on the move to the operating theatre. Say goodbye. But first, a quick kiss. Bye, sweetie. <laughs> see you. Or two. See you soon. Okay. See you in a bit. All right. All right. Yeah. Come on, chin up. All right. Bye. In Newcastle's A&E, the waiting room is filling up fast. Here, seriously ill patients take priority. A&E bed nine is about to meet one patient who fears she's had a stroke. Do you think you'd be able to try and do it? If we give you a hand. Yeah, we, we could help, won't we? 73-year-old Sandra has been rushed in by ambulance after her speech became slurred. She's with her daughter, Alexis. Oh, there we are. Well done. Oh, Alexis is having a brilliant place. It's down to junior Dr Richardson, who's been at the RVI for just two months, to try and diagnose Sandra. When we examine the patient, we look for speech problems and, you know, loss of sensation, things like that. She does have a little bit of slurring of her speech. This is quite a deterioration off a normal baseline. At the moment, she's just not particularly safe. I'll just come and run those blood tests and then we'll take things from there. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. No problem at all. Oh, 
not to feel so useless now. Strokes are the third most common cause of premature death in the UK. They occur when the blood supply to part of the brain is cut off. Dr Richardson sends Sandra for a scan of her brain. I've just come to tell you, I think we're going to get the scan your head and then they're going to come and see you after that. Yeah. And we need to make sure whether they've had a stroke, which is a blood clot, or whether there's a bleed on the brain. If there's a bleed on the brain, there's a lot less we can do than if there's a clot. I'm right behind you, Mum. I'm just kind of worried about what they're going to find or if something is really wrong. Yeah. Ready, steady. Oh, that's good. There you go. Diagnosis is tricky due to Sandra having a serious existing condition, Parkinson's disease, which affects her mobility. Suddenly, you're the one looking after the mum. It's, it's quite scary as a child. You, well, I know I'm not a child, but you, you still feel like a child with your mum, you know? I'll hold that, you just get the strong. I don't know, it's, it's quite scary. It's a real reality check today. That's funny. Yeah. Sandra and daughter Alexis must now wait patiently with bed nine for the results of blood tests and her brain scan. As UK birth rates reach an all-time high, we join bed seven on one of the NHS's largest maternity units in Romford, Essex. Look at next patient coming. Okay. Make sure that you have you know, room prepared and she's in triage, she's for ARM. Queen's Hospital is just 15 miles from London. Its 25 labour beds offer round-the-clock care, meeting about two women each day. Go on, push again. Yeah. <laughs> Today, midwife Pariva will be part of the team looking after the next expectant mother. It can be really quick. Sometimes within 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah, every person is different. 32 year old Mevish has joined maternity bed seven to give birth to her second child. She had a long labor with her first and is hoping this time it won't be so drawn out. Finally, I've got a very nice and comfortable bed. The couple were introduced to each other by family members. It's kind of arranged marriage. It's not a love story, actually. Yeah, my family doesn't believe it, but yeah, that's true. We started seeing each other in February or March somewhere, and uh, in June and July we decided, look, we can't go without marrying. Like so, you know, that's why we decided to. Go. I think it was just after last. I think just a four, year, four, four, four months, and that's it. That was over three years ago. The couple have since had a son. We've been through this. Three and a half years ago. <laughs> what do you already have? A boy. boy. He is exciting. He asked her, you want a baby boy or baby sister? Oh. And he said... And he always said sister. Oh, he's <laughs> always wanted a sister. Yeah. So you always... Uh, Play with the ladies, not... The not lady, uh, the it's not the just so he's going to be Dad a gentleman. There were complications with their son's birth, mm -hmm. which led to a difficult delivery. Mevish and Mohammed are anxious that the same could happen again. There's a very normal concern that what happened before will happen again. And, you know, we can never say it won't happen either, so we can't say to him, all right, that won't happen. The Royal Victoria Hospital in Newcastle. Back with Rhesus Bed 2, toddler Nicholas is still battling for breath. He was rushed into A&E by his mum, Claire, 
and is still being treated with an inhaler to deal with asthma attacks. Somebody as poorly as, as, as this little one, we really need to treat them quickly. Yeah. That's why we're in recess. Yeah. Nurse Emerson has 22 years of medical experience. So he's had one, two, three, four, five, six lots of medication, and that's got on top of, of his problem a little bit. But he's still a poorly man. He would probably get more of respiratory problems than anything else, really. More so as well in the winter, and, and the weather's just changing now, so we'll see a lot more. Oh, I'm keeping a, a, a record of uh, his observations, just so we can look back and see. He, he has improved a little. We can see by that, and it's much easier if you do them regularly, so you can see see what's going on. Nicholas has now been in recess bed two for close to three hours. Um, but now he's getting his voice back a little bit. This is a good sign, I think. This is a good sign. He's starting to show some signs of improvement. Do you want to lean him forward for me? <laughs> Dr Astle is a specialist from the children's unit. She's back to check on Nicholas's progress. Mommy. Right, I think he's a bit better. I'm not going to rush to give him that medicine through the drip. Okay. I think he's just yeah. turning a corner with all that self use mm -hmm. We'll pop him into the monitoring bay around the corner where I can dip in and out a lot easier. Yeah. He's a bit better. Oh. Yeah. Right. I think the fact that he's just talking. Big yeah, he's woken up a bit. Yeah, he's <laughs> Where are we going? Nicholas and Bed 2 are moved around the corner to the children's observation unit. Wellies. 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 He's perked up, and the one thing he wants is his wellies. Come on, then. Wellies. Wellies. Well, they think that he's probably had some sort of um, asthma attack, probably triggered by a viral infection. Doctors want to keep Nicholas overnight to make sure he's fully recovered. You're happy now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mama. Papa. 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 Yes. Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Back in day surgery, Eddie has left bed 52 for the operating table to have his hernia sorted. It's an operation that new girlfriend Shirley hopes will take their relationship to another level. There's lots of places I want to take him. He's never seen anything in this country. He never had a passport, I had to go and get a passport. I'm really looking forward to him being in good health again now. Can we watch? Bed 52 is back. Hello, darling. There we go. Safe and sound. Bye-bye. Hello, darling. Hello, oh, babe. Mm. How do you feel? All good in the hood. <laughs> How do you feel? Aches a bit, but it's going to be first, isn't it? Thank you for being here. I've never been anywhere else. I oh, know. <laughs> yeah. As we go. Okay, pull yourself up. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Eddie really wants to leave bed 52, 
but before he can, he's got to eat, drink and go to the toilet so doctors can be sure his body is working again properly. I don't like hospitals, I don't like being in hospitals. The sooner I can get away, I'll feel a lot better then. so dry. Just drink. It's dry. I just hope he can actually walk out of here, because that's what he wants to do. He wants to go home tonight. He's so intent in going home tonight. Just need to eat and go to the toilet. <laughs> but Eddie's struggling. Two hours since his surgery, and he still hasn't managed to pass urine. If Eddie doesn't manage to go soon, he'll be moved from bed 52 to a bed on the ward, where he'll have to spend the night. And I tried to say to him like, before we came in, I don't get too upset if you have to stay in. I said, I'll come and get you in the morning. But he's got this thing about hospitals and he doesn't want to stay in. <laughs> Although Eddie is getting himself dressed, he still hasn't managed to go to the toilet. I've got the urge to go to the loo. No. This closes at 8 o'clock. I have to find your bed in the ward somewhere. You've got to try. Do you want any more to drink? With three hours of drinking water behind him, Eddie makes a tentative move to the loo. Yeah. Do you want me to get out of the way? Hello. <laughs> Which way's he got to go, Andy? Which way's he got to go? Down there. <coughs> go on then, off you go. Where'd you go? Yes. You've been? Did it. Did it. Did it. Success at last. Bed 52 can finally move on, and Eddie and Shirley can head home to start making plans for the future. Thanks very much. Got your parole. Thank you. Got your parole. Thank you very much. Thank you. At Newcastle's Royal Victoria Infirmary, A&E Bed 9 has been with Sandra for over an hour. She fears she may have had a stroke after her speech became slurred and has undergone a series of tests. You want that? It doesn't taste No, no, this is A&E, darling. Sandra is already having to cope with Parkinson's disease, a progressive condition affecting her nervous system. So Sandra, my name's Harry. I'm one of the stroke specialist nurses, OK? So I'm just going to ask you some questions and ask you to do some things, OK? So just stay with us. Like While Sandra waits on a &E bed nine for the results of a brain scan, specialist nurse Curry carries out some physical tests. Okay. What I want you to do now, if I stand down here, is just keep looking at my nose, okay? Yes. And just follow the pen with your eyes, but keep your head still. Just keep looking at me, see that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and try, I know it's hard to do. Excellent, well done, okay. What I want you to do is squeeze Grab hold of my hands and squeeze both my hands as tight as you can. As hard as you can, you won't hurt us, you're fine. And mm -hmm. pull us towards you. And push us away. Okay. Does that feel normal for you? Yes. The strength in your arms there, does that feel yes. normal? Okay, you're nice and warm. <laughs> what I want you to do is keep looking at my nose, okay? And tell me what's moving, okay? So what's moving now? Can you see anything moving? How many fingers are moving, can you see? Two. Two. Now? Sandra's decreased mobility has been now? putting a strain on the family. Her time on A&E bed nine Two. is proving now? cathartic. My dad, I think, is really frustrating for you because at first he kind of wanted to take charge and, like, we can get through this, I can, I can manage this, we can do this, keep going, Sandra, keep going, stand up straight, do this, do that, and... My mum couldn't do that, and he's had to realise, OK, I'm going to have to take a step back and actually support her. And now my dad's doing things like the dishes and things like that, which is amazing, because my dad 
no idea, couldn't boil an egg, and I'm not kidding, it was one time we made some toast. Next thing I know, the grill's smoking like mad. I'm like, what have you done? He's like, well, I put butter on. And I'm like, but you don't put the butter on the bread and then put it under the grill, Dad. Oh, oh, right, I see, you know. And I mean, it's frightening me a level because the idea of my mum not being there terrifies my dad. Because they've been in love, and I mean really in love. They've never argued when we were kids. It's OK. It's OK. I know. Some days she can be really good, and then other days it's down. So we just keep assuming that she's going to get better. You know, that's light at the end of the tunnel. You just keep assuming that, you know, one day you're going to wake up and everything's going to go back to normal. And you've got to have that level of hope. You know, it's just difficult being confronted. The funny thing is, it might say the same thing. We will get you back. Yeah. It'll just take a long time. Yeah. But then, I don't know how much this low blood, low blood pressure is, is affecting things. And I'm so weak. Yeah. Just shut your eyes for a bit. Other guns. Other She needs to be seen by the ED doctor. Sandra's CT scan has come back all clear, and specialist nurse Curry is happy Sandra's passed the key cognitive tests. I couldn't find anything quite out of the norm. My daughter states that this is our baseline. All right, okay, that's fine. They both said that her mouth is OK as well. Her mouth looks absolutely fine to me. OK. But obviously, if she deteriorates more, just we'll go another ring. We'll come down and reassess. Yeah, that's is fine. that OK? Yeah, that's great. Thank Cheers, thanks. But Dr Richardson is still concerned. Okay. Sandra had a few issues going on. Her blood test came out normal, CT and everything was OK, and the stroke team were quite happy from that point of view. And she's just not having a stroke or had had a stroke. But um, obviously it's just something we would like to put to bed quite early, make sure that we're not missing something on that front. Dr Richardson believes her slurred speech may be a worsening of her Parkinson's disease. But bed nine is needed for another patient. At the moment, she's just not particularly safe and doesn't feel safe in sending her home. So we've got her through to the assessment suite where they can take a bit more time um, and then we can get on with seeing other patients who um, we may be able to turn around or we may need to admit. Right. It's a little hop down. Okay. Sandra parts company with A&E Bed 9 as she's moved to a more comfortable one on a ward where she'll stay until her condition stabilises. Bed 9, meanwhile, is prepped for its next patient. At the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham, Bed 40, in day surgery, has been part of the team for the last three years. We always go to make the trolleys as a bed. Oh, no, Unlike the fast turnaround beds of A&E, this bed is by your side all day. Next. <laughs> it's waiting to meet patient Thomas, who has very high expectations. Yeah, yeah, of course. Is it a double bed or...? <laughs> <need to> talk <laughs> yeah. Thomas's lip and gums failed to develop properly in the womb, so he's been in and out of hospital since birth. Today, he's come for a final attempt to reconstruct his palate. His girlfriend Sophie and her dad are here for support. Are go get some... We're just going to bed for see which is just here. Oh, when I was born, it was quite horrific, uh, the cleft lip and palate was. So I think I was about six months old when I had my first operation. I'm now 25, so it's it's a long process, isn't it? Do you want me to take my shoes off? Yeah, yeah, of course. I just don't want to get the bed dirty. It's like if you go out for a meal, because it's artificial fat, it teeth, you can't eat properly with them in, so you have to like, take them out. Um, it's just constantly, if he wants to brush, you know, brush them, he has to take them out, brush his teeth, and because it's supposed to have all been done by the age of 18, so... But now, obviously, he's 25, so I think he's fed up of it now. Is this the fourth time we've had this one done? Uh, basically, it's just failed, so I've got to come and get it done again. Uh, but I've had maybe, what, maybe 10 to 15 operations previous to this. 
which have all gone well. It's just this one that's holding it back. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, Surgeon Mr Sharp, who is a cleft palate specialist, will be carrying out the tricky procedure. So, risks. Infection is the big one. We'll give you antibiotics in theatre and afterwards, and it's important to keep your mouth clean. Basically, today is about a final attempt to get enough bone to give him the implants that he wants to replace his missing teeth. And if that doesn't work, then there are other options, but I think you know, for a man of his age, this is the better option, if we can, to, to, to put implants in and fix his teeth to him rather than having a plate or anything else. So, so if you want to put your gown on, yeah. we'll, we'll get you up there. Right. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas is almost ready for the operation, but bed 40 is about to learn something else about this patient. He just doesn't like when he's being put to sleep. And uh, that's it. That, I think he doesn't mind the actual operation, it's just the putting sleep there. Because he watches this film called Awake, and then he, it's where this man has been put to sleep, and he's, but he's still awake. So, yeah. He's, yeah, that's his worrying bit. You all right? Yeah, good, are you? I'm one of the anaesthetists. Yep. I've looked at your previous anaesthetic charts. There doesn't seem to have been any problem with any anaesthetics that you've had before. No, it seems fine. No, so. Fantastic. Good. So you're the one who puts me asleep, are you? Yeah, there's two of us today. Yeah, so just make sure you put well. plenty in there. Because yeah. I always say that to you. Because I don't need me half soaked. <laughs> just okay, put plenty that. in and then I'll be fine. Have you watched that film called Awake? No. Have you ever watched it? No. Oh, I hate that film, I do. Yeah, go back home and watch it. So okay. It's brilliant. So. Any questions that you want to ask me about your anaesthetic? No, just okay. make sure I'm asleep. Keep an eye on me. No so. problem. Because that's me worth I don't mind the operation. It's the whole okay. sleeping process what does me in. So, yeah. Good. So. All right. We'll Thank you. Then, okay. Yep. See you later. Mm -hmm. Hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sleep. The one thing Thomas can rely on throughout his procedure is day surgery bed 40. It will be with him from the ward, into surgery, and then back into recovery. Oh, Wee, here we go. Just check your wristband again, please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Give us a kiss. Yeah. yeah? Right, love you. Mm. Love you. All right then, Meg. Yeah, look after yourself. God, I hate this bit. <laughs> So have you been with us before then? Yeah, quite a few times to be fair. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. I just hate the whole putting the sleep process either. Yeah, it's, it's a bit yeah. daunting, isn't it? Yeah. I don't mind the operations, it's just... You know when they say, oh, you're going to go to sleep, sort of thing. Yeah. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Right, you get mentally prepared for this. Oh, you just want to... Huh? You want to look after you anyway. Yeah. Back in Romford, maternity bed seven has been with Mevish for almost an hour. She and her husband Mohammed are anxious about the birth. With the first son, which was three years ago, they'd um, had a shoulder dystocia, which is where the baby, um, the baby's head is born, but the shoulder will get stuck. So it can be quite stressful. There's, there's, you know, there's, it's an emergency. Mevish's labour is proving uncomfortable, increasing the couple's anxiety. Is it still hurting? Yes, isn't it? The options that we have for pain relief are this, and if you think this is not good enough, then there's pethidine, that's an injection into your thigh. If you don't want that one, you can still go for epidurals. But with the epidural, it's going to be a little while, it's not like it's going to be straight away. When we had our first baby, she had an epidural. So probably she didn't feel the pains that time. So probably I should say that it's going to be her first time. Do you have any pressure down below? Yeah. Have any yeah. pressure? You're getting pressure? Loads of it. I'm thinking, a bit tricky. She really wants a pain relief and she's feeling pressure. So most likely she's, she, she, she's likely going to deliver. Oh. It's up in there. Have it. Especially when it's not first baby, it can be really quick. Well done. My God. No. My back is 
Yeah. Okay. That's it. Don't panic. Are you sure? Right. Just breathe. Okay. Yeah. If you start to breathe. Yeah. My you have, it's okay. Yeah. That's fine. Just have to, you had to, you just have to breathe. Then it will be fine. Mervish has been in labour for just under two hours when suddenly there's a complication. Change your position. Right. Roll a little bit onto your left side, please. Yeah, baby's heart rate's dropped down ever so slightly. So just roll onto your side. Let go of this hand completely, this my darling. Just go a little bit over. That's a girl. It's all right, don't panic. Don't okay, panic. It's all right. Go with it, all right. <laughs> the medical team are watching the baby's heartbeat closely. Any change can indicate the baby is distressed. If it doesn't stabilise soon, they may have to intervene. Back at Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth Hospital, day surgery bed 40 has not left the side of anxious Thomas. He's having an intricate bone graft operation to rebuild his palate following several failed attempts. You're right. You're right. But it's not the two hour procedure that's worrying him. It's his fear that the anaesthetic won't knock him out. So are you guys in there all the time? Yes, yeah, so we're yeah. with you all the time. So we'll be in here in the mm. theatre and then in the couple Yeah, the just monitor everything and make sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a good place I only have. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just a whole thing of going to sleep. Yeah. It doesn't... Well, you're out of control, aren't you, completely? Uh, it's not good. No. So can yeah. you just keep an eye on it, make yeah, sure yeah, it doesn't... Yeah, no problem. So what we're going to do is give you a little bit of option to breathe, okay? Nice, easy breaths. Just, big breaths. just relax your breathing. Just breathe normally. Mm -hmm. Okay? Surgeon Mr. Sharp has carried out over a thousand cleft palate operations in his 12 year surgical career. In previous attempts, Thomas's body has rejected artificial implants and an implant using bone from his hip. While the bed stays with Thomas throughout the operation, girlfriend Sophie is left waiting in the empty bay. I think it's nerve wracking actually because um, I always think there's a slight so many percentage, I don't know what the percentage is, but it could always go wrong, couldn't it? And I always, I know it's really a, a, like, a dull moment, but yeah, I think uh, it could always go wrong, you never know, do you? Tom? Tom? Come on, Tom. I was just saying how comfortable this bed is. It is, it's very comfortable. Come on, Tom. Tom? I can't relax until he's back and he's awake and I know he's up all right. Yeah. Take a big deep breath for me. Well done. There we go. Open, open, open. Well done. Hello. Um, I just want to see him. That's it, just want to see, because I think he'll be in a bit of a mess, really. It went well. I think uh, I, I, I'm going to be cautious here because I bone grafted Tom before and thought that it went well and found out that I was wrong. So um, I can't guarantee it, and he knows that. But uh, I'm pretty confident that, that we'll be able to finish this now and get him some teeth that are fixed, and that will be the end. Back on the ward, and Thomas has rallied. That feels really good. I feel really good. Mm -hmm. I do, honestly. I feel really good. So, I think the best I've ever felt after an operation. So, it's all set to me now. Go do so. I can easily go do it. Uh, yeah, perfect. So, you've got your spot on, haven't you? So, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. It'll be six months before Thomas finds out if his good feeling about his operation does mean his palate is finally fixed. At Queen's Hospital Romford, the maternity beds are with women throughout their labour, whether it lasts an hour or over a day. Bed 7 
has now been with mum to be Mevish for two hours. I'm shivering. Sorry? I'm shivering. You're shivering? That's yeah. okay. Nothing wrong. Okay? Doing great. Oh, can I have a guess in there, please? Yeah. Oh, there were concerns the baby might be in distress, but the baby's heart rate is now stable and Mevish is in the final stages of labour. I tried. What are you feeling with the contractions? You're feeling pressure? Are you feeling like pushing? Oh, good. Okay, very good. Okay, well done. It's all right. I don't think we'll need that passage. Midwife Pariva recognises the signs. Okay. We've got baby on the way? Yes. We'll be having baby soon. Oh, all right. Good girl. Oh. It's all right. Is another one coming? Oh. Okay, go with it. Coming thick and strong now. It's She'll okay. be here soon. It's all right. You go with it now. Listen to me. When you feel that contraction, go with it, OK? Do what your body's telling you to do. All right. Good girl. Bringing your baby a little bit closer every single time. And soon, Mevish gives birth to a healthy baby girl. Oh, wow. Good girl. Hello. Happy birthday to you. Hello, Mummy. You're amazing. Oh, my baby. Look at that hair. Oh, my baby. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, well, we were so scared, actually. I know. I showed this to her. I said, try. Oh, my God. Very happy. Watch it. I'm so glad to and, uh, and I don't believe it that yeah, it's just it happened so written. quick. Yeah, it's a textbook to live with. Great joy and a new life. It's job done for bed seven and on to the next. Our hospital beds have given us intimate access to the work of the NHS. Following her admission onto bed nine in A&E, Sandra is now at home and feeling a lot better. Edward and Shirley are planning a trip to Ireland for their first anniversary, following his successful hernia op. Thomas is recovering well and remains optimistic. And after his short spell on rhesus bed two, Nicholas's breathing is stable. The beds are now back on their wards, ready and waiting for their next round of patients.